So we're going to go over delivered capacity, and I want to keep it extremely simple. We need a couple things to get our delivered capacity. Okay, we're going to need our total external static pressure. That's what TESP stands for, if you guys didn't know. So total external static pressure on a fan coil or air handler is going to be our supply static pressure and then our return static pressure. I like to get it as close to the unit. Um, most fan coils factor in a you know, basic filter, but get it close to the coil um, so that way you have an accurate total external static pressure. And some of you may say, why, why do we need our total external static pressure? Because we also need to know our system airflow. And our system airflow adjusts based on our total external static pressure. On ECM motors, it's not as much as PSC motors. Anyways, point is we need to get our system airflow. So when we're doing a new install, um, we want to check our total external static pressure. Then we cross-reference that to the fan chart, the airflow chart. We look at what speed tap do we have it on. At that point, we're going to look at do we have it close to, in this climate, 350 CFM per ton. So we're going to get it as close to that as possible, right? Set it up for that. At that point, we run the system for 15 minutes or so, then we use our psychrometers and actually <coughs> put one in the supply and put one in the return. I always say put it in the return. I like putting it in the actual filter door. That way, any duct gains, anything you're picking up in that return section is being reflected. Now, if you have a gap or a crack or something, it could come through and, and affect it in a different way. But you're getting a pretty true reading of the ability that that system has to cool right now. So the psychrometers test the incoming air and then the outgoing air, and it does the math right, right there for you. It does the calculation for you. You're just putting in the airflow, entering, and, and you get the airflow by checking total external static pressure, looking at the airflow chart, and bam, that's it. It's as easy as that. So I don't really want to complicate it any more than that as far as how you do it. That's how you do it. There's no like, oh, you actually need to do this, this, and this. That, it's that easy. Are there additional complications when you're using an airflow chart um, on a piece of equipment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Your coil could be dirty. Your blower could be dirty. These are factors, right? Your filter could be dirty. It could be double filtered, right? I don't want to get into all of that right now. I primarily want to focus on this is how you do it. This is how easy it is. Like when you think of after this meeting, and most of you have done this, but after this meeting, when you think about doing a um, delivered capacity, is it overwhelming? Like is it like, oh geez, that's too much? Like honestly, like what's your what's your thought on it, Bert? Uh, I've done it lots of times. It's not overwhelming. Okay. Um, Grant, you do this on a daily basis, pretty much. Works pretty straightforward, right? Really easy. Really easy. Yeah, quick. yeah. Using Measure Quick, amazing. Have you done it, Ronnie? Okay, okay. So you've done it then. Um, Max has done it a hundred times. Aaron's done some on some installs. Um, Britain's done some. So most of us have done it. Pretty straightforward. Okay? Does everyone kind of get how to do that? Yeah? Now, I, the last thing I want to go over, over real quick is when is it really important to do this as a installer? Every install. It is. It's really important to do it every install. Do a detailed report. It's going to have the cooling capacity in there. You know that new piece of equipment that you installed 
today is working as designed. Now, if it's a three-ton system, does that mean we're always going to produce 36,000 BTUs? No, it doesn't. There is some variation based on the equipment matchup and then the actual conditions of the indoor and the outdoor. Plays, plays a role on it. Uh, they call that, on Measure Quick, they call it a uh, nominalized. Mm -hmm. I think it's nominalized. Nominalized and actual. Nominalized and actual capacity, yeah. So the target would be the nominal. That would be your, that would be your target. Um, and usually on a three ton, it may be 35,000 BTUs, 34,500 BTUs, something like that. So those factors come in. So installers, every install, pretty straightforward. Adds an extra 10 minutes to the, to the day. If you're getting good at it, it's, it just kind of becomes part of your workflow. As a service technician, when do you use that? I'm just curious, like, I know when I use it, but like... <laughs> on an AOR callback. <laughs> on an AOR callback, that's a great one. So, yeah, so um, I went to a couple this past week, and I used it twice. Um, one was on a, it wasn't, an, it was an AOR callback, but it's been drawn out for many years. So we installed the system. Two years ago, I went there. The system looks beautiful. Um, it's a multi-speed air handler, single-stage outdoor unit. The install looks really good, right? Like, man, it's a little upstairs bonus room, a lot of heat load, one and a half ton, about 600 square feet. And um, he's really having an issue getting it below, like, 80 degrees in the heat of the afternoon. He's just really struggling, right? So we've been out there multiple times. Um, what's going on? What's going on? Why isn't it keeping up? Why isn't it keeping up? So to me, we do, let's do delivered capacity, right? Let's do delivered capacity because that's going to show us, is my system doing everything that it can do? If it is doing everything that it can do, then I have to look at reducing load. So that would be a prime example of when I want to do it. So Eli and I went out there and we did a couple different ways of doing the delivered capacity. One was um, return air from the actual space at the grill, and then our supply and our delivered capacity was what, 10,000, 11,000, something like that. And it was supposed to be eight, uh, 18, a true 18. 18, not nominalized, but that was the HRI rating. So, like okay, we have a, we have a major issue, so we moved the psychrometer to the in the return box, and we were kind of moving it around, and we would get hot spots, depending on where that probe was located. You know, inside the room was showing 76, but in that box we would get 82, 80. That was one scenario. Another scenario, and so that was kind of a fun one. Another scenario, we went to an AOR <laughs> AOR job, and we did a delivered capacity, and uh, we were about. 25% low, um, adjusted a couple things, dialed in the charge, and then we got the equipment working perfectly, just with some minor adjustments, right? Really long set, long line set application. And um, now we know for a fact the equipment's working to the best of its ability. The duct works good. We've inspected that. If they're still having an issue, we want to reduce the load in the home. So these are like areas that you're going to use it. Um, you go to a customer um, that had another company install a system and say, yeah, it's just, it's just not keeping up. No, it's not keeping up. When you're using Measure Quick regularly, getting the delivered capacity in addition to the rest of your measurements is super easy. Like I think it asks for, I think you got to enter outdoor air temperature. So that's one like little thing you actually have to manually enter, unless if you have a probe and you map it to that. Um, but other than that, it really just kind of does it for you. Older equipment, beware, harder to get the airflow perfectly dialed in. On brand new equipment, checking the total external static pressure, system airflow chart, 
you can get pretty stinking close to actual airflow. Older equipment, those challenges pop up a lot more. Um, dirty coils, you know, blowers, restricted returns, restricted supplies. So the value of understanding delivery capacity is huge. And you'll use it quite frequently, quite frequently. So I wanted to mainly have you guys understand it's not complicated, pretty straightforward. It shouldn't be something you're overwhelmed by. If you don't know how to do it, talk with your mentors, talk with your trainers, and say, hey, can you walk me through that? You know, I know we just sat through the class, but let's, let's go through that one more time. How do we check total external static pressure? You know, you know I've seen other guys do it. I haven't done it personally. Uh, what, what do I need? What tools do I need for that? And really just have those conversations. And then as mentors, as trainers, walk those guys through that. Walk your coworkers through that process. There's going to be little things, little details that aren't so obvious to everyone. And that's OK. That's why we're all here. We're working as a team collectively to bring that information together and learn from one another in the group. So, sound good? Very good. Thank you guys so much.